Right guys, so today I thought I'd make a quick video on developing your own C41 colour film at home. I've got a roll of Fuji Superior and I'm going to develop it in my Tetanol Colortech C41 thing. Now this is a three bath kit, I've already got it mixed. I will talk a little bit about how to mix it up yourself but it's really self explanatory. I know a lot of people consider this more difficult than black and white, but once you get going with it, it is really, really straightforward. The C41 is a standardized process, so I'm developing my 200 ISO film this morning, but I could put literally any C41 film in. You can put um, your portrait in with your Fuji 400H, it really doesn't matter, and for that reason, if you shoot quite a lot of film, it's fantastic, because you can always fill up your tanks, do three at a time, get everything done at once. Now, I don't have one of the submersible heaters, so what I'm gonna be doing today is just getting this sink full, getting this sink up to exactly 38 degrees, and at that point, the whole process will start. It will, once the tanks are heated up, it will take me less than 15 minutes to do the whole thing. Okay, so this set only requires three baths, but when you take it out of the box, you are met with six different bottles of chemicals. What you've got to do is decide how much working solution you want. That's how much each of these bottles contains and that's the solution that comes into contact with your film. Now personally, I use one litre for every single bottle because that's how much my tanks take and that allows me to develop anything from three rolls of 35ml up to six rolls of 4x5 sheet film simultaneously. Now there are three separate chemicals that go into your colour developer and then they, you have 200 millilitres of each plus water up to your litre total. For your Blix, that's a, that's a contraction of bleach and fix. What you have is 200 millilitres of each of these. I am assuming that's bleach and that's fixed, just based on smell. And then lastly, you have your Stab. This is a stabiliser, and this is just mixed with water. So that's one chemical, and I put that in at 200 millilitres to 800 millilitres to get my litre. Once you've mixed your chemicals up, you've just got these three bottles and these are the three bottles which you're going to submerge in water to bring up to exactly 38 degrees. Let's get going with that. First things first, you want to get your water bath prepared. Now, I'm using quite a big sink and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the water temperature to max. I'm going to run that at about 45 degrees. Now that's just how hot it comes out of my tap. And the idea is that I'll get a stable water bath at around 42, 43. I'll chuck all my chemicals inside their glass bottles under the surface and I'll leave the sink just gently dropping in temperature. I've got the tap set to 43 degrees and I've just checked with my thermometer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my three bottles and I'm gonna lay them on their sides in the sink. Now I do that because uh, the water in this sink doesn't quite come up and cover the top. And it's very important to have the entire liquid at exactly the same temperature. So what I do is I lay them down and whilst I'm waiting for the temperature to drop, I gently roll them back and forwards in the sink. By doing that, I ensure that they're evenly warm and I'm not gonna get any temperature gradients whilst they pour the liquids. My taps just reached the overflow cutoff, so I'll leave that. Gonna have a quick check of the temperature. And I know it's gonna be a little bit over 42. I can see by quite how fast the needle is rising that it's definitely gonna pip over 40. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave this thermometer here against the side of the sink so I can keep an eye on it whilst I load my film. You have to bear in mind that if the thermometer itself is in contact with the side of the sink, it might show a slightly different reading to the temperature in the water and also that if you check the temperature inside the bottles by putting them vertical, unscrewing the lid and placing the thermometer into the liquid, you might get another temperature. Now it's the third and that the, the, the inside of the bottle is the most important temperature. So make sure you check that one just before placing anything into a development tank. Okay, jumping a few minutes forward. This is my film tank, which contains my one roll. Now, I want to get this up to 38 degrees as well, otherwise as I pour the chemical in it will lose a bit of its temperature. What I do is I immerse the whole tank in the water like that, but I don't give it a pre-bath. Now obviously if I let go of this or take my weight off it, the tank just wants to float to the surface. So what I do 
and it's a little bit of a sort of workaround, is I take this breadboard and just place the end of it over the tank. As you can see, I've trapped this under the surface and my film is actually right down here and it's just gonna sort of absorb the heat from the water bath. I am now ready to pour in my chemical when this hits 38. So what I do is I gently prop the thermometer against the tank. Let's use these bottles to make myself a makeshift stand. There we go, that's about right. And I can just watch that. You might want to read a book or look at your phone because this does take quite a long time. We're currently at, yeah, we're just under 40 C. Oh no, it is rising now. Okay, so we're at about 40 and a half degrees Celsius. I reckon that'll take about 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna leave this to it. So these bottles have been heating up for another five or 10 minutes. What I'm gonna do is give each of them a little swirl around to just make sure that the liquid inside is thoroughly mixed up and all in equal temperature. Now I've done that for all three. What it is a good idea to do is meter the temperature from inside the bottles, not just the surrounding water. This is my color developer. This is the first chemical to go in. So it's this one which is most crucially at 38 degrees. Let me put the thermometer in and have a quick look. He's still rising at 36. Okay, it looks like he's gonna be marginally over 38, but not by too much. That might be my cue to start. Let's have a quick look. Okay, he's reached 38. You know what, that's good enough. Um, he's on 38, I'm ready to go then. If I give that a quick rinse now. I'll take this guy out of the water quickly so he doesn't float away. I do need to grab my phone because I am going to use the timer on here. So I check my data sheet. This is between my 9th and 11th roll, this particular tank. So what I'm going to do is... Okay. I'm being told to do 3 minutes 45 seconds, but I'm going to do 4 minutes, which is technically a push of half a stop. But I'd rather be on the safe side than risk underexposing anything. So I take this tank, and if I just push this down against the bottom of the sink, I can start to pour in my chemical. The guidelines do give you 5 seconds each side for pouring the chemical. So you do get a total of 10 seconds, which is discounted. So there we go. That's my five seconds. That started rinsing off the small amount of dev that I got on my finger. Similar to black and white, it's good practice to agitate for the first minute and then 10 seconds every minute after that. So if I just keep spinning this guy, I don't actually invert the tank with these because there's only one roll of film and there's a lot of space above it. What I do is just use the agitation rod that came with my Patterson tank. So I just lightly spin this, occasionally changing the um, direction of rotation. Some people say that you should lift your tank out and tap it twice on the side just to get the bubbles out. I'm not too worried about that. But I am worried about getting even colour across the frame. So I just gently spin it for, I don't know if you can see that, just the next four seconds, three, two, one, tap for good luck. Okay, he'll be ready in three minutes. And what I'll do is I'll use this funnel to put the developer back in here. Now, as I said, this is the ninth to 11th time I've used the, this particular batch of chemicals. And I am gonna take this to at least 20 rolls. So it's good to keep them keep them safe, keep them back in their things as quickly as possible. Apparently if you leave the lids off for too long they start to evaporate or react with the oxygen in the air. So that's ready to go the second the chemical pours out. Right then guys, so it's been four minutes. I've just pulled my developer out of this tank back into the glass bottle because I'm planning to use it again. Now it's time for Blix, the second bath. So again, as before, I push this down against the bottom of the sink, slowly pour in my second chemical. 
This one's a little bit nastier, it's not something you want on your fingers, so be extra careful while pouring it. This process is gonna take 10 minutes because of the amount of times I've used this. Each bath you give film with this chemical actually slightly reduces the potency of it. So when I first started it was only four minutes and now it's up to 10. But he's all in, start the timer. Okay, like with the other chemical, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it one minute of agitation off the start and then I'm gonna give it 10 seconds every minute until 10 minutes is up. Okay, my 10 minutes is up, so it's time to pour out my Blix and start the wash. So again, carefully with the funnel, I pour all of this back into the chemical bottle for reuse. And then, let's get him out of the way. I'm gonna plug this hose into my tank. And let's turn him on. Now he's just gonna flush through directly to the bottom of the tank and bring out all of the blicks. So if I turn him on, let's give him a bit more power, speed this up. He's gonna be in there for three minutes. So I get my time back. Okay. If you don't have one of these hoses, remember you're gonna have to slosh it and pour the chemicals out. Uh, the water and Blix mixture will get less and less concentrated. Eventually it should just be clean water. I've got my hose thing, so I just leave this for three minutes. I'm gonna come back then and put my final chemical in. Three minutes. So tap off, this guy's done. If I take the hose out first, this is just water, so you can pour that straight in the sink and you can add your final chemical. Now, Stab is a little bit foamy. I don't know what it is about it, but you want to pour this one slowly and try and get it to kind of nicely curl into the tank rather than bubbling, because it does go everywhere. Okay. He's in, and I reset my timer for the final minute. And as before, let's get my funnel ready just to replenish the chemical afterwards. He's happy, put the lid away. Right then. Now, with Stab, some people say agitate it, and some people say there's no need to agitate it. What I do is I just lazily give it a flick every now and again, just to keep it loosely sort of moving around, keeping it even. It's, uh, this only takes a minute, so I guess if you're agitating it for the whole thing, it doesn't even make that much difference. Now I've got 20 seconds left, I'm gonna look at some film clips for my hanging and drying. Okay. Right, three, two, one. And as when you pour the stab into the bottle, pour it back into this tank with the funnel angle so it goes down the side or it will foam. You know what, it's gonna foam anyway. Nothing I can do about it. Okay, right, he's done. Now, all finished. The film is in this tank and the images are ready to look at. What I'm going to do, everything's still covered in stab, and I don't think it's too nasty for your hands. But just chuck everything in the sink, you don't want to leave it or get it against your clothes. Here is my film, yeah? I can see the line between the frames because it's quite tightly wound, I can't actually see the pictures yet. Right then, here is my fancy film drying rack. So I'm going to chuck this clamp on the top and just put them on here. Ignore that, that's some black and white from the other day. Now I put this second clip, this is the weighted one. He just sits down here and makes sure that it dries perfectly flat. If you want, at this point, you can actually look through the roll. If you're wondering about certain shots that you thought maybe you underexposed, maybe you missed your focus, particularly if you're zone focusing, you can have a look and make sure that you've, uh, you've got what you wanted. I shot this roll this morning, so I, um, 
I can actually remember half of this roll was only about three or four hours ago, so it's quite funny to be able to see it so soon. Got some Regent's Park, got some shots on the tube. All looks good. I can come back in three and a half hours and that should be dry enough to scan.